Welcome to the Food Founders Podcast. Today, I'm excited to have Mary Bentdahl and Josiah T. Ragelson from Shrew Meats on the show. We're going to be talking about your new favorite way to get mushrooms and maybe your new favorite way to have a burger or meatballs as well. So very excited to have you both on the show. Thanks for hopping on the Food Founders Podcast. Thank you so much for having us. We're super excited to be here. Can we kick it off and I'll just hand it over to you guys. If you can just let everyone know what are shrew meats? What is this all about? And why should everyone want to get their hands on these? Well, shrew meats is a healthier meat alternative that's made with only six ingredients you can read and pronounce. Our main ingredient is shiitake mushrooms, and it's just an easy meat substitute. We have an original flavor of the product, so it's a neutral flavor that it comes in. So it's really easy for you to just use your favorite sauces or seasonings into your favorite meals that you make during the week. So it's just, it's a healthier way to eat your favorite foods meatless. And I love what you mentioned that it's six ingredients that you can actually pronounce. Talk to us a little bit more about that because when you go through the meat alternative aisle, it doesn't always look like that. So how are you guys able to accomplish something along those lines? So very simple. This whole invention started in my kitchen when I was making the food for my mom. She's been a vegetarian for almost 40 years. We always explore different foods, different ingredients in the kitchen. And shiitake mushroom was just something simple I would make for her as a meat alternative for something meatier. And also it provides a bit of protein for her. And then one day she just said, what is this? I love the texture. And and then I started showing my friends, making the food for my friends. And they're all like, I don't even know it's not me. So it's just, it developed from the simple ingredients in the kitchen and the real ingredients in my kitchen into this. And so we wanted to keep it the way I used to cook it in the kitchen. So it, it has stayed this way and we want to keep it this way for a long time because we need to make sure that the food industry is going to change in a better way that we're going to eat the the things that we know we're eating but yeah that's how it started to be the six ingredients we know and we can pronounce all of them i love that i am a meat eater and i also love vegetarian food and so if i'm going to eat something i know myself at least i want things that are natural real good for my body and i've had your guys products and i've been able to have it and mix it in with different food and it really absorbs the flavor and it also it doesn't feel fake or anything like that which some of the other products out in the market that do have a lot of that do offer so you guys definitely have something very unique here are there a lot of other companies out there that are doing something similar to this or do you find your biggest competitors being the more artificial competitors out there and having a whole bunch of other ingredients that people can't pronounce or anything like that. When we first got started, when so I had visited Desaya in Thailand and she showed this mushroom ball to me. And at that time, Beyond was just really starting to um, get a name for itself. My thing was I didn't want to eat meat alternatives that had a lot of processed ingredients in them. And I wanted to be able to eat something that was satisfying. When she showed this to me, I was like, awesome, there's totally a place for this because it's something that I want. Then, you know, selling and in business, at first that was the competition with the more traditional meat alternatives, the processed, the soy-based, wheat gluten-based, like all of these kind of more processed, I guess is what is the best way to call it. Yes, that was the competition beforehand. But now there are starting to become more mushroom products out there. I think a lot of people are seeing how beneficial like mushrooms are. They're superfoods. Shiitake mushrooms have been eaten for thousands of years as food and medicine. And there's all these other mushrooms too. Most of the products out there now are starting to use mycelium, which mycelium is the root of mushrooms. We use the fruiting body, We use what, which has been something that we've eaten for a long time. So we know that it's going to be good in our bodies. Yes, there are starting to become more products out there, but not like ours in a way that we use the fruiting body. We like to be as as natural as possible. Like Desai said, it came from our kitchen. It didn't come from a lab. It didn't come from studying and researching like how to make this. It was just made with love. Then I wanted to add to, we also use upcycle mushrooms. And a lot of people 
I know the word upcycle is something we understand within the industries, but for consumers, a lot of, actually not even a lot, we have it in the packaging, but only a few ask, what do you mean upcycle? So we actually use the mushrooms that are about to be thrown away. Same idea as imperfect foods. Um, the ugly ones, the the imperfect ones, the ones that aren't going to be in the market because they're, they're perfect. Um, so we take all of them because they're going to get you know, chopped up anyways. So we take all of them and, and that's the fruiting body that Mary was talking about. And yeah, just the idea of using something simple. And I guess to coming from Thailand and cooking a lot of Thai food, I don't know how familiar you are, but they're, the ingredients are all natural. There are a lot of ingredients that go into it, but it's mostly it's farm to table. It's it's your backyard plants and trees and fruits. So that yeah. natural piece. I love that you guys have kept that. And what you said was like, this wasn't, it wasn't made in the lab. It was made in a kitchen. And that is a very big difference than what is in the market a lot of times right now, for sure. Okay. So this started in the kitchen, making it for loved ones. You started getting family and friends to also try it. They loved it. Talk to me about how you went from that to then taking it to the U.S. market and having the brand that you have today. A lot of people would just be like, hey, this is great. My family enjoys this. Yay, family hit recipe. You guys decided to go and take it to the market. So talk to me a little bit about that. Sure. So the family thing is one piece, but I had a much bigger goal, which is the environment. And yes, it sounds very dreamy, but I my my background was in architecture. I did that for a while. I also spent a lot of time out in nature. I scuba dive, I climb mountains. I, I have traveled and I have seen how much the nature has changed in a decade because of the climate change. And so I was really interested in that. And I got to be part of sustainability program, UCLA. And that showed me even more. I think that was like my enlightenment. So I was about to shift to green architecture, but then I was like, oh my God, I, like we can do so much with food and just how much the meat industry has our planet at the same times with the mushroom that that's already being cooked at home these two pieces came together and we did more research on how much more sustainable mushrooms are versus the meat industry so that that was when we realized okay mushroom it is this is a great this is a great ingredient we can um, possibly save the world with that developed into our products and we were thinking of hey what do people eat the biggest meat consumer is in the u.s and brazil let's focus in the U.S. market because that's where Mary was already, Mary's already here. That's our bridge together. So we looked at the U.S. market and then we started the burger patties and the meatballs and then came the shredded, which is the ground meat. Just so it could fit into people's daily cuisines, the cooking and daily life. And how do we, how do you solve that problem, but also try to make it a little bit more convenient for the consumers. And did you guys start selling this once you were like, okay, we know that mushrooms can change. Like the world is such a huge piece. Did you start selling at farmer's markets? Did you go right to retail? What did that journey look like? We went right into production. <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's something I, I do want to talk about later too. But first, you know, step by step. First, we went to look at the farms in Northern Thailand. Um, we want to make sure we, you know, look at something that we know the farmers and we know where it's coming from. So started from sourcing um, to production. We are lucky to have known our co-packer who's been, their whole family is um, vegetarian and they also feed their workers with vegetarian meals every single day. So they're fed with this amazing, um, delicious, healthy foods. Um, we're lucky to know them and we have developed that relationship from sourcing to production to exporting to employees starting from there. But no farmer's market. We went right into sourcing and production. I love it. You guys just went right in. You're like, okay, we're going to go not only in full scale, like manufacturing, but we're going to be importing this. And you got to figure out all of those logistics as well. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love it. It's go all in. This is great. Yeah. What, what was that like for you guys? Had either of you guys done any import export before? Were you figuring this out as you went? What did that look like? Oh, my God. I actually remember that phone call with our customs broker. And I was like, hey, I've never done this before. 
can you help me? And she's like, I got you. And she like went through the list of prices. This is how it's done. This is how you do it. She was just like at that time, such a beacon of light for me. And unfortunately, we don't work with her anymore because she's not in the company that we're with. But I just I'm like, that was the first person that I worked with in this business to to do something with this company to move the product. That was one giant hurdle in itself. I came from the fashion world. I guess there's importing done with that, but I never worked on that side. I worked on the design side of things. Yeah, importing it, that was its own hurdle. Finding a frozen storage, which our product isn't frozen anymore. It's a shelf-stable product now, which I don't ever want to do frozen again. <laughs> it's That's got its own list of hurdles to jump through. But finding a cold storage and then making sure, like, having all of these working pieces, like, communicate to each other. And make sure that it's seamless from the transportation into the warehouse and the customs information. And then once you get it here, okay, now what do you do? You get it here, now what do you do? Let's just take it to places and see if people like it. We liked it. Maybe other people. Let's just go to some stores. Desaya and I had a, our cooler that I think we got from Walmart or Target. And we threw some ice in it and we threw some product in there. And we went from store to store. We're like... Hey, do you want some sure meats in your store? We didn't know how to pitch. We didn't know how to sell. We didn't know how to do any of that. And it's just like looking back on it, I just I laugh in just like a really innocent way of how naive we were and just but how excited we were too. And we're still excited about it. But now I think we're like, okay, there are some things you do. There's some things that you don't do. Like when you've been doing this for long enough, you can't, you got to play along with everybody. You can't just be so naive with it. So it's, it, we first got started in Bob's Market in Santa Monica, and we did our first demo there the weekend of St. Patrick's Day, and we created a party with it. We had nice. music, we were flipping burgers, and people were super interested, and we had really great feedback from that. And then we got into Erewhon after that, which was really exciting. I don't think we realized how big of a step that was at that time. We're just like, oh, cool, another store. It's, it was quite a journey at first. And we actually launched the product early of 2019. We had a year to get our feet wet in the industry before, you know, 2020. Um, And we even actually was able to start doing some food service with our product. But the the pandemic really affected that. So just boots on the ground and figure it out. I love that. You know, what else is there to do? And you guys have figured it out along the way. And being a team, I would imagine, has also made it easier in some ways. Talk to me about how you both divide and conquer running this business. Yeah. Um, like Mary said at the beginning, we just we jumped right into the products and just let's get the products to the market without even thinking about other foundations of the business. I think over time we've learned um to really have uh be responsible of each thing that's assigned to you. So yeah, so Mary is now um, our director of sales. So she is taking care of mostly retail. She has built uh, the relationships with the buyers and the retail world. And we've learned so much from it. And I myself have learned how to lead the company too, because I, as the founder and CEO, there, there's, you got to be ahead of the game and you have to make sure that you provide the right system for the company to run. So that's been a learning curve for me too. And it's pushed me in front of things. And I got to make sure that the team has a good system in place and the team has the resources. Yeah, absolutely. And it becomes just dividing and conquering and, and learning all these new pieces as you do it. Mary, how has sales changed since showing up with the cooler and just being like, hey, do you want this product? What does your sales process look like now? I'm learning I have to be more patient. Process. And as lucky as we got the first few times of walking into stores and getting onto shelf immediately, that doesn't happen, happen all the time. So just really, really understanding that, yes, I am, I'm working on this project. I'm working on getting sure meets into retail stores. And this is my job. This is what I do. On the other side of it, there's someone else who is a buyer. They have their job, right? And it might not be their full passion, like how this is for me. So I also need to respect that and have some boundaries with them. I shouldn't just 
like you've said before to me, Ansley, don't just walk into the store and demand their time. That's a little arrogant of me, and I understand that now. So I'm trying to be better about honoring their their calendar reviews, working with them and trying to keep that relationship going. And yeah, understanding that it's a process. It takes time. Even just like a one store independent could take a month from working on that conversation. Even someone that you've worked with in the past, it could take a month for you to work out all the details and the kinks and everything. And the bigger the store is, you just got to multiply that by that amount of time that it takes. And then just really understanding our marketing tactics as well. Understanding that it's not really about talking about the product, it's talking about what problem we're solving. Just really focusing on that, like how is it going to make our people's lives better? You're going to be able to keep enjoying the foods that you love, but it's healthy and it's delicious. That's what we're working on. We're not working on showing how amazing sure meats are. We're working on showing how amazing your life can be still maintaining your health goals and enjoying food because that's where the good times happen is around food. And that's something that we know and we love to do. Our hobby is eating. I'm with you. Me too. Can't and live without it. <laughs> right. yeah. And it's such a piece of bringing people together. And just like you guys did that first demo for mm-hmm. St. Patrick's Day, Bob's where you're making a party out of it. Like food brings people together and your food mm-hmm. allows that. And regardless of if you're vegan or not, you don't need to feel like you are having, if you're at a barbecue, you don't need to feel like, oh, I have something that like no one else is going to enjoy. I've got vegans in my family. I've been vegan for a period of time. I tested out for a while. And like that exclusion is something that's really hard for people in all facets of life, let alone around something that is food and it's centered around everything really i completely agree with that yeah like when you put labels on us people we segregate and then what's the point of food because that's the center like you said that brings people together yeah yeah there's no limitation you don't have to be vegan to eat true meats you don't have to be a a complete meat eater to eat true meats this is something for you to enjoy on the day you don't want to eat meat and you want to enjoy something that has a meaty texture and enjoy the benefits of mushrooms and help the world a little bit. So it's for, it's, you don't have to be one thing to enjoy it. I love that. I think that's really great. And at the core of the food industry in so many ways. So you guys are still importing from Thailand to the U.S. Talk to me about what that looks like. I would imagine that's not the easiest piece, but you guys have worked some things out over the years. You started in 2019. What does that look like for you guys? And if you were to start all over again, would you continue to do the exact same thing with having production overseas? Yeah. Yeah, we're still doing the same thing and doing it better. I think one big hurdle was definitely the supply chain crash um, during the pandemic. So that was really hard for us. And I wanted to add a little touch on the sales. This is the first full year we've seen a consistent growth because when we were launching the products, doing market research with our frozen product, it was right before the pandemic hit. And that was when we did um, food service too. So we didn't have the chance to grow. We, we, it was a downturn for us. And then we took the time to do product development. So this was a full year for us to constantly working on growth. And I'm so happy to see us in, a bright, in the right direction. But yeah, we're still doing the same thing. We're still sourcing the mushrooms where we source from. We had a bit of issues with the ingredients, but we were able to figure it out just in time. Now we try to make sure that everything is planned ahead of time, especially coming from overseas. And you asked if there was there, there's something that we would have changed. I guess a couple of things. <laughs> I would have launched in Asia. I would have launched in Asia yeah. because it's keeping things local. And um, because we have built this relationship with our co-packer um, and then slowly launched to the U.S. might have been an easier way for us and a less of a, uh, a risk of loss. However, we have managed to you know get past that. But if we were to make things a little bit smoother for us, I would have done it closer to where we make the products. And do you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think our excitement and our passion got the best of us in the beginning. And yeah, let's do this. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, this is great. Um, looking back now, I we we started off with a small batch. 
I would have wanted to keep it that way. I would have wanted to start small batch. We brought in, was it like a half pallet of stuff? I think we brought in. It was, it was two, three. It was a few pallets. It, yeah, it wasn't much, but it was enough to where we could test out the market, see how it went. And we, there, there were, if I could go back and tweak things, I would tweak a lot. But to the answer, really answer your question, it's small batches and bring in as you need. But the difficult part is, is that it's overseas and it's really unpredictable. It could take uh, three to four weeks from the ship leaving to the States. It could take two months like it did when we brought this most recent product in. That international supply and manufacturing presents its own issues. Yeah, either small batch starting in Thailand and growing from there. I don't know the Thai market as well for something like this, but I know here in the market it's going to do good. It's just getting that hurdle of that supply chain and the logistics of it and making sure that it's feasible in the long run. You guys are working very well at figuring that out. And that is not an easy feat that you guys have been able to overcome already in the business. So huge congratulations to you guys for that. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I think sometimes when you're put or you put yourself in a hard situation, you find a way because you have that goal and you're like, I have to make it work and it's going to have to happen. So you would find a way. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes it's good to be in those constraints. You figure a way, right? You figure it out. And as you yeah. guys have. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. What do you, I'm curious, what do you guys do primarily to get people to learn about shroom meats? Because you mentioned it is shelf stable. Uh, how do you get people to learn about this, educate them about this? What does that look like from a marketing and sales perspective there? And Lee, you're going to be very proud. Our in-house chant is food in mouths. How do we get more food in mouths? Love it. Love it. That's been our going chant. That's our saying. How do we get more food in mouths? So getting shroom meats in front of people. When people try shroom meats, they love it and they want to buy it. So we've been really focused now on doing demos in-store getting in front of our customers and getting them to to buy in that store because we know them when we can get it in front of people, they'll only try it, they'll buy it. With the product being as new as it is, it's a little un it's a little unsure of what it is when you first see it in the store. On our mushroom patties, there's a big, juicy, delicious looking burger. On the mushroom balls, we've got it in marinara on the outside. So it's obvious to see it's a mushroom product, but people aren't really sure of it because it's not a meat substitute that's been in the market before. And it's a little bit pricier. It's a premium product. So a lot of people don't want to just have an impulse purchase with something that's, you know, a little bit more expensive and not sure if it's something they'll like. We're just working on getting people to try it in store demos, events, trade shows if we can, even right down to doing donations to mushroom events or like vegan festivals. Just trying to get in front of our customer, right? So where are they hanging out? Where are they? Can we sample to them and can they purchase there? Can we send them products? Can we do collaborations on Instagram with other mushroom brands? So just really trying to get the product in front of people as much as possible. And that's been showing some really great success. I'm very proud of us for getting that figured out. And now we just need to pump it up. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, Desai, it's like this year has been the first full year out and like we've been seeing great growth. So it's working. And COVID-19 still exists. Things have changed drastically from the year we didn't know what to do with it. So this has been a full year. We were able to go out and and be in person to offer. Do you want to try a bite of shroomy? Like this is instead of getting on the internet and and brag about how great it is. So it's been easier for us for sure to get the, the food in front of people and put it in your mouth. It's really good. Yeah, I promise it's good. You'll like it. Don't say that, by the way. It's it's been, I'm thankful for 2023. Yeah, that's great. And for you guys, based on where you're at right now in the business, what are some of the big challenges that you guys are currently facing? Obviously, every new level, we hit new obstacles and new learning opportunities. What does that look like for you both, given where the business is at right now? There are definitely a couple of layers. I think I'll, I'll go first for mine. I think it's product market fit. Like I like we have shared with you earlier on that we this came from 
the home kitchen. We think it's great. We've tried it with a few friends and we went into production. So if I could go back in time and do it better, I would want us to be more data driven for a product market fit and really design something that works, that will work with, with a data to back that is really going to work and test, do a lot of testing, do a lot of surveys, just make sure that our packaging stands out the right way and not only take a few comments to completely change or develop a product. So I think um, product market fit is something we're working on. It's been a challenge, but it's a great guidance for us to make sure that we're going forward. We're going to design something that will work for the market. Makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Mary, um, anything on the sales and marketing side there? Yeah, we, Anthony, I know you You know this. I'm not going to, to say the name of the store, but we did do a, a nationwide launch earlier this year and I'm so excited about it. It was an ego boost, let me tell you. And now, looking back, I didn't know the full situation. I didn't know the entire process from start to finish of it. I relied on someone who was unsure of the process, but I put my trust in them. And I think that really put us in a tough situation now because we brought in enough product to resupply for their reorder and that reorder never happened because it was a one-time plus up test. So that's been a really big hurdle for me. I know it's been for Desaya too because we're working on this together. I'm just trying to figure out how do we keep this moving? How do we keep this ship <clears throat> afloat? I think now that I know this, I want to make sure I fully understand the process of everything. And like I said before, nothing happens overnight. And that national distribution that plus out that almost happened overnight we got the purchase order at the end of october and it was on a shelf by january 1st that's unheard of that was a two-month launch unheard of now knowing this and also making sure that we have our store support that's really critical to our sales and marketing strategy is making sure that we can have people in the store sampling our product to customers if we're going to do another nationwide launch, I would rather plan it out for a year. These are the stores we're going to be in. How much product are you going to do? These are the people we're going to find. So just really building the structure, building that system for it to be a success. Your ego is not your amigo. And so many times we say it, but it's sometimes not until on the back end where we're like, dang, my ego got the best of me with that. It's so cool to say, oh, we're in this store. And now it's I'm dealing with those repercussions and having to really figure out what do I have to do. And again, you put yourself in a hard place. You've got to figure out how to get out of it. So that's what we've been doing. And I really think it's helped us really grow into the food founders that we are and the, the businesswomen that we've become. I'm really proud of us. As hard of a year as it's been, I'm really proud of us from going from the different ranges of places that we've been from really low to really high. It's a tough road. This entrepreneur life, it's a tough road. It's, I don't think, ever easy. But I think just finding the success in those moments and holding on to those and then just believing in what you do, right? Just keep going, wake up, keep grinding, keep trying to reach those goals, get that mission. And, and for anybody who is about to start a business, I would highly recommend get a lawyer to read every single contract. Do not assume you understand it. If there is just a term you don't understand, please reach out to a lawyer. Don't assume anything. Assumptions, do, it doesn't work in the business world. So I, that's going to, and I think too, it's, it's an investment, but it's going to save, it's going to save you from a lot of losses in the future. That's really great advice there. Uh, absolutely. I know sometimes it's hard for people when you are bootstrapping everything to justify certain expenses, but sometimes those expenses that where oh, should I, maybe now I can figure it out on my own. It's You're just far better off when you actually do those investments in the long term. But it, it takes a mental piece to get there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Any other advice that you guys would have for anyone else who is starting out in the food industry or is maybe a step or two behind you guys, what other advice would you have to share based on what you've learned to date? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So like we shared with you earlier, we started with Frozen, you know, so we, we jumped right ahead 
of ourselves and we it was not easy we have gotten past it but anyone who's about to start your business i would just look around at your resources and just start small i think that's the easiest way and it's just you know a lower l- risk of loss if it's going to be a loss for you you slowly win you win a little bit but then it will it will get you to a bigger win it's just going to be easier on you to for learning for resources for experiences for funding Unless you come from a place with a high capital and you have experiences and resources, then that's another story. But for someone who maybe would be start at the same position like we did, I would definitely start small and just do the best with what you have mm-hmm. as a start. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay. Research. And even when you think you've researched it all, research it some more. Know what industry you're getting into. For starters, right? Know your market know your product, know what problem it solves. Just understand what you're doing. The the why can come later. Sometimes the why is what drives us, but just know what, be a little bit more informed of what you're doing. We've been figuring that out as we go and going back to the beginning, what would you do different? At the very beginning, I would have done more research. I would have, I would have probably taken one to two years to really understand and research and be a part of Ansley's Food Founder Incubator <laughs> Program. If you have Ansley and her program, be part of her community on Facebook and just get in, get into the communities, get into the networking. There's so many CPG founders out there that want to help others. I wasn't aware of this at that time. And now that I'm in it, we all just want to help each other because it's a tough industry and there is, there's not a school for this. There's people like you, Ansley, who want to help other food founders and you want to help out the food industry by making it healthier, not having a bunch of garbage easily accessible to everybody. So just getting yourself in where you're supposed to be and then launch and then start your product and brand and just do your work before doing the work. I agree. Yeah, I know I super appreciate communities like you guys that it, it it I didn't feel very included and just so new in the industry when I when we started doing this, but with the people like you guys, Ansley, like your community, the startup C V G included program we've been part of, you just don't feel alone and that that helps so much. Yeah. Being excellent. Yeah. Don't need to figure it out all alone. And it's so really hard not to, not to feel like you are. Yeah, there's definitely people out there and communities out there that can help fast track that process for sure. Yeah. And anything on the horizon for shroom meats in the coming months, coming year? What's next for you guys? You want to share the our expansion first and then I'll share the I'll share the product. So going back to our strategy, food and mills. So that's our strategy of making sure that we're really pumping up our current retailers and our future retailers, new regions that we're opening, making sure that we're doing that. But at the same time, we want to get people excited about something amazing we've been working on. It's not stopping right here. We have a lot more to offer. We want to make sure that we provide something more flavorful and delicious and easy to use and eat at home. So we're working on some flavors. That's going to be really exciting. We want to make sure we keep feeding we keep using mushrooms to feed you guys and that everyone can enjoy it and that we can a uh, positive impact to our food supply chain, food system and our environment. Yeah, we are hoping that sometimes around next year, I'm not going to say when yet, we're going to have something to share. Nice. Exciting. Everyone go follow Shroom Meat so you can stay in the loop of when this new expansion is going to be happening. I'm uh, very excited to see you guys continue to get food in mouths and to continue to find ways to have mushrooms, be a part of people's diet and just be part of people's everyday food that they're going to have and provide a really great solution that I think lots of people are very hungry for. Yes. Yay. Yeah. And get signed up with our newsletters. That's where we're making our announcements. And you can even be a part of this new launch. We want to make sure that it's what our customers want. We want to make sure that we're feeding our people what they want. Yeah. So go to our website, shroom eats. Oh, 
You can get signed up with our newsletters, follow us on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on all those social medias, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube, we're on all those. So follow up and let's see. Yeah, you can buy our product too on our website, Amazon, on Amazon too. And then for people who are in SoCal, we're in natural chain stores like Lassen's and Clark's Nutrition, Independence in SoCal, Rainbow Acres and New Frontiers in Solvang, Seaside Market down in Cardiff, and then also in the Midwest, Pete's Fresh Market and Woodman's Woodman Market. So right. you can find it there. Good, good. Everyone, go get your shirmeets. Go check them out. Be a part of the upcoming launch and be part of changing the food industry for the better and having a great different alternative for your regular beef patty that you might want to have or your meatballs that you might want to have. Have a fantastic shelf-stable solution for this as well that is completely vegan and with only six ingredients that you can pronounce. Oh my gosh, who would have thought? It's amazing. <laughs> we should do a challenge to yeah. who can spend the least amount of time to read all the ingredients. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And again, shroomies, you don't have to love or hate mushrooms to enjoy this because I I have met so many people who are hesitant and just said, I, I really don't like mushrooms. But when they try it, they are amazed. And yeah, I really, we want the products to be enjoyable and it's working. We see more and more people becoming our fans. So I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, absolutely. You guys should be very proud for everything that you've done. And Defy and Mary, thank you so much for sharing your story on the Food Founders Podcast. I'm looking forward to continue to watching you guys grow. Thank, Thank you, you so Ansley. much, Ansley. Appreciate you.